Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Sir Alex Ferguson Challenge with Sheffield United. I just wanted to start this video with a quick thank you to those of you who are watching and engaging with the content. I really appreciate it, you know. Some of my videos, you know, particularly like the summer transfer window ones get a lot of views. But it's those guys of you who are sticking with it, watching everything, I really appreciate what you're doing. But anyway, let's get back to usual um, stuff that we're doing now. In today's episode, we're going to face Rosenborg in the Europa League. And we're also going to face an away tie against Liverpool, who have been pretty dominant in the Premier League in the last two seasons. And we're away from home, so it's going to be a very difficult game. There has only been a couple of games since the last time we met, the first of which was our second tie against Sport and Lisbon in the Europa League, which we beat them 4-1 away from home. Jean-Pierre actually started up front in this game on the suggestion of my assistant manager, and he did very, very well, getting two goals in the 32nd minute and the 92nd. Bella Kochap and Esposito completing the scoring for us. So it was a good dominant win, and there's back-to-back -back wins against the strongest side in the group. And finally, it was an away tie against Norwich in the Premier League, which we won 2-0. Marcus Antonio scoring a penalty spot for the first time in his career. And Ender Stevens coming on late on, getting what must be his third or fourth goal of the season with four assists. Pretty good. We are still top of the Premier League. We're only a point ahead of Chelsea in second. And a, a loss at any point could see us drop as far down as fifth. So we're not exactly running away with things, but maintaining our top spot position is always nice to see. Rosenborg are today's first challengers and we are away from home and this is how we are going to line up. Jack Butland in goal, Tilo Kerrer and Bella Kochap with Onjean at centre-back. Dodo and Luca Pellegrini retain their spots at left wing-back and right wing-back. Renato Sanchez comes in with Marcus Antonio at central midfield. Danny Olmo goes in his favoured position in behind the strikers with Jean-Pierre playing up front instead of Goebbels. He had a great game in the last European chap uh, tie we had so... I'm going to play him there again and Esposito joining him up top. Obviously when Erling Haaland returns he will come back in the striker role and Jean-Pierre will move down again. But um, it's nice to be able to get all three of our central midfielders involved because they're all in their own ways performing pretty well. So Rosenborg are playing a 4-4-2. I can't recall playing, that very off playing against that very often how our system actually performs against it but we'll guess we'll see today. Esposito finding Renato Sanchez who goes for goal and goes just wide. But yeah, they're playing cautiously at home, so as you would expect, um, they are least favourite to win this game. So you would expect them to sit a little bit deeper, keep the midfield a little bit more compact, and we'll see how our players deal with that as we go 1-0 up, 9 minutes in. Sebastiano Esposito's 8th goal of the season, an assist from our right wing back Dodo. I think that's his 3rd or 4th assist of the season. Some nice stuff to see 10 minutes in. Um, playing well with Jean-Pierre coming out wide for the throw in Dodo then finding Esposito in a pocket of space near post finish ideal another highlight now it's another throw in high up the pitch Jean-Pierre manages to win the header but he can't retain the ball and Hel Merson can come forward for Rosenborg now he doesn't have many options but he manages to find the only one Samuel and now he's in behind Jack Butland with an absolute worldy of a save how his hand has managed to keep that out I do not know but um, we, we should probably be 1-1 at this stage. And that's going to be it for the first half. A pretty quiet one, but Esposito's goal obviously giving us the one goal advantage. Jack Butland being the hero, keeping that one goal advantage will kick off for the second half. No changes made. Except from Luca Pellegrini, who's going to have to be substituted because he's picked up an injury. Which is uh, typical of his career. He is injury prone, so it is to be expected. First highlight of the second half comes five minutes in. 50 minutes overall and it's Rosenborg who are currently in possession and keeping possession well might I add. Uh, they've got the ball on the right hand side, they try to play it over the top, Jack Butland can claim it easily. Another highlight, well it's the same one, Rosenborg still look like the team who are going to make a difference here and now we are Hell Merson's ninth goal of the season, a male seed, providing with the assist as well. That was hugely disappointing, Jack Butland gave the ball away almost instantly, straight to seed on this uh, right hand side. And they may, they may have punished us. Our defence was too high. Helmerson beats the offside trap. And he levels things up for Rosenborg. Really, really disappointing. 55 minutes in now. And there is another highlight. We have retained possession here. And 56 minutes in. We be, might be able to create an opportunity. Or maybe not. On Jean finds Marcus Antonio. Olmo, Renato Sanchez. The three central midfielders combine them pretty nicely to retain possession. As Marcus Antonio brings the ball forward. Um, we're not really creating any spaces here, lads. If one of you could move, who, or I mean, 
don't even move. You don't need to move. Daniel will take care of it. He scores from about 20 yards. His first goal of the season. He has still returned from injuries. Not performing at his best right now. But um, he's doing his best right there. What a goal that was. From It was about uh, maybe about 25 yards. Fantastic finish to put us 2-1 up. Hopefully we'll maintain our lead this time. With about 25 minutes to go, we're going to get Renato Sanchez off. He did pick up a knock there. He is recovering slightly, but I'd rather not risk him uh, picking up an injury. We've got a pretty thin squad, so any injuries do cause problems. Dodo on the right. Oh my god, the keeper just about keeps that out. It looked like it was going to be a hell of an own goal by the Rosenborg defenders, but they managed to survive it. Five minutes to go in this match. It looks like it's pretty cut and dry, but Rosenborg have proved that they are pretty deadly on the counter-attack, or at least from the wing, so we've got to be careful of that. Marcus Antonio finds Dodo, keeps it in, but gives the ball away. Would have been better for us if that went out for a throw because it gives them the opportunity to catch our defence in a high line. Samuel finds the ball at Asen in the centre of the midfield for Rosenborg. I mean, they're keeping the ball well without really advancing up the pitch too um, severely. But there's the long ball. That's what we're looking out for. Conradson. Oh my God, what a finish that is. 2-2 two, two with only five minutes to go. This is a little bit embarrassing, I'll not lie. Rosenborg are causing us all sorts of problems when we give the ball away. And that ball over the top has done us twice now. And Conradson with an absolutely superb finish, just missing the post and hitting the side net and to give them the goal. I mean, we've dominated this match, but we haven't took our opportunities and we haven't really created that many clear-cut ones. So uh, we've only got ourselves to blame if we don't manage to get the three points in today's game. But Marcus Antonio finds Ender Stevens. The ball's cleared and Helmers, oh, it's two on two. It is two on two. Helmerson driving that goal, he goes just wide. Um, we could have lost the game there quite easily. But it looks like the game's going to finish now. Rosenborg 2, Sheffield United 2. A very, very poor performance. They will be joining me for training tomorrow. Um, really disappointing to be able to lose that. After we've dominated both Sporting, Sporting and both games to then draw against Rosenborg. I mean, they are still undefeated after that, actually. Must have drew twice against Panathinaikos. But, um, yeah, you would expect us to win that game. And the fact that we didn't is hugely disappointing. We're going to rest our boys as we do have Liverpool coming up next away from home, and that is in just three days, so I will see you there. Our contract runs out at the end of the season, and finally the board come to me and offer me a new contract, so I will be getting a new deal at some point from the board. We'll just continue on now to see how much they're actually going to pay me, um, which would be nice to see. So Sheffield United offer a new contract on £94,000 per week, um, so a decent bit of money. So let's start the negotiations here. Um, we will agree to, obviously, the club visions and stuff. I don't think we have a choice there. So we'll see if we can crack the 100k mark. We'll not go too crazy. I think I don't think we're going to be. Um, boards actually don't really negotiate on Football Manager. I don't know if you've noticed yourselves. But um, once they've made an offer, that seems to be pretty much all they are willing. <laughs> I'll not push it any further. We'll take the 94k a week. But that just secures our position at the club until the end of the 2020 2026 season and um, so another four season deal uh, i think we'll still be i think we'll still be here four seasons from now um i think we're pretty far away from reaching a champions league final which would indicate the end of this series so um i think we'll we'll we'll, we'll see a good little stint with sheffield united so following on from that game against rosenborg i'm not particularly confident going away from home against liverpool um, they haven't started this season in the same electric form they usually do. They've lost two games in the first nine games against uh, Bournemouth and Chelsea. But um, yeah, they're they're a pretty good side on Football Manager, so I'm not I'm not coming into this expecting anything. I think likelihood is we'll get beat. The best we can do is a draw. This is how we're going to line up for today's game though. Butland and goal, Kerra, Batella and Onjean at centre-backs. Dodo and Ender Stevens, as Luca Pellegrini is still injured. Marcus Antonio and Danny Olmo back in the centre of midfield. Renato Sanchez, of course, being suspended. Jean-Pierre is going to be in, in behind Gables and Esposito. And Liverpool come at us with a 4-2-3-1. A pretty familiar sight. Um, we've already saw a lot of the signings. Like Lautaro Martinez, I think they assigned him in the very first season for forty-two million pounds. Um, Palacios, I think, is that a new signing? I think it is ninety-six million pound from AS Monaco. 
A nice bit of business by Monaco there. Scriniar, Declan Rice, Joe Gomez, the usual. Very, very, very talented squad. Let's see how we get on. First highlight of the game, nine minutes in, it's Jack Butland playing a shot over defenders and then clearing, giving the ball straight away, but thankfully Ender Stevens can bring it down and find Esposito in behind. He's beat the keeper. No, he hasn't beat the keeper. He beat the defenders, but he couldn't beat Allison. First half an hour or so have been a little bit iffy in terms of the match stats. Liverpool are definitely dominating their possession, but Esposito finds the ball again. Sebastiano, what a player he is. His ninth goal of the season and an assist for Jack Butland, Route 1 football. All the way, just call me Big Sam. Um, and there, here we have it. But Butland with a free kick from his edge of his 18 yard box. Esposito absolutely does the defenders here. They're completely not making the challenges that are necessary. Allison can't get close enough to his strike and he beats him at his far post. But as you can see, Liverpool are definitely dominating the match stats. They've got a few players who are really struggling for match conditioning, though. So the second half will hopefully prove to be an effective one for us. But. That was a poor thrown by us as Sadio Mane comes down the left-hand side, uh, benefiting from it. Ongin manages to get a clear, but Naby Keita retains possession for Liverpool. Trent gets dispossessed, but a falls to Martinez. Seems to be a lot of things are bobbling uh, Liverpool's way as Sadio Mane picks it up on the edge of the 18-yard area. Mohamed Salah goes for goal. Very close. We need to be careful. Another highlight, 35 minutes in, it's Palacios who picks up the ball for Liverpool and it ends up finding its way to Sadio Mane who cuts inside and finds Naby Keita driving through the heart of our defence. He chips the ball in for Minos there. It's all too easy, his fourth goal of the season. Liverpool definitely um, worthy of their equaliser goal. And it was a decent little finish, good run by Sadio Mane off the left-hand side. Naby Keita catches um, Ender Stevens sleeping there and manages to find the space in between the centre-half and the wing-back. And Bobby Firmino takes advantage of the decent cross. 1-1. 40 minutes in now. Long ball over the top. Esposito was in behind once again. Alisson with a decent save. Goebbels keeps it in. Is he going to go for goal himself? He is. And it goes just wide. It seems we're getting a lot of our good opportunities with the balls over the top of the defence. They're play, obviously playing quite a high line. Um, so we will look to exploit that a little bit. We're already, we'll, we'll change that from short to standard. To see, how, see how it goes from here. But I might actually end up playing more direct as the game goes on a little more. Ender Stevens plays the ball to Danny Olmo. Marcus Antonio will have to go all the way back. But thankfully, oh, Danny Olmo gives the ball away. Thankfully, we can be... Oh, God, lads. I mean, no way. It's hard enough to commentate without you just constantly giving the ball back to them. Alexander Arnold, though, brings it down the right-hand side for Liverpool. We've got men in the box, so the cross doesn't end up coming anything. But Sadio Mane picks up the ball. Joel Matip Martinez goes close for Liverpool. Another highlight now, Sadio Mane gets the ball from a free kick, I believe it was, in the box. He can't get a shot on target though, which is good for us. 60 minutes in now, feels like Liverpool are turning the screw a little bit. They are having every highlight and dominating the possession. Ball's played through, Jack Butland can claim it. We'll see if we give the ball back straight back to Liverpool. We don't though, Gubels finds Jean-Pierre Dry. Oh, that, what pass was that? That was absolutely awful. Sadio Mane can receive the ball from Alexander-Arnold's clearance. As Naby Keita receives it in the centre, back to Trent. He cuts inside, finds Mohamed Salah. He saw that space opening up. Butland manages to get his hand on the cross and beat the clear it slightly. Sadio Mane keeps it in but can't keep the chance alive. Ender Stevens is going to have to stay on this pitch. Bella Kotchap can come on though for Jerome Onjin, who's played pretty much every game for us. So he's probably pretty tired at this point. We will... Look to maintain the freshness of our centre-backs by rotating, thanks to the better strength and depth we've got this season. Another highlight now, Goebbels on the right-hand side beats his man and he finds Jean-Pierre in the box. He goes for the strike and hits the side net. And only 10 minutes or so to go in this match. Can we hang on for at least a point? That would be ideal. Obviously, we came into this game expecting defeat, so getting one point is one more than we thought. Goebbels, can he... Launch a counter-attack with Danny Olmo. There's so much space. If we find the pass, don't go offside. But Danny Olmo ends up keeping the ball. And he's brought down by Naby Keita. He's not even a yellow card. Jean-Pierre with a free kick, though. Goes to the back post. Fabinho. Why was that a highlight? Why? We'll look to make some subs. Um, Danny Olmo will take off for Oliver Norwood. And Dodo we can take off for George Baldock. at right wing back. Um, we'll stick with this highlight though, Liverpool, oh, Liverpool, go 2-1 up, you didn't just say that, come on, is it offside ref, is it offside, it is, that's what we wanted to see, 
let's just go defensive. Let's just go defensive for the final few minutes. See if we can actually keep them out. And there we are. We will keep them out. The referee blows the full time. Was a Liverpool one, Sheffield United one. There was a period when we first scored where I thought we might actually win this, but um, after that second half performance, we are um, fortunate to come out with a one-one draw. So that point sees us still sitting top of the Premier League table, but we are now level on points with Arsenal with identical records. We are only on top with one more goal difference. We're also level with Manchester City in third. Um, Decent, decent start of the season by us. First 10 games are obviously always quite telling of how your season might go. We haven't really played too many of the major sides. We've got the likes of um, Chelsea, Manchester City, my, not Man United, we've played them. But particularly Manchester City, we haven't played yet, which could be a difficult tie. But to go and beat in your first 10 games in any Premier League season is always fantastic. Looking forward to the next episode will be our final game of our Europa League group stage campaign. The only team we haven't faced in an episode is Panathinaikos and we'll also link that with a home tie against West Ham in the Premier League. But anyway, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like and if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.